Um, one of the pleasures about giving a talk is, um, apart from the audience, is the person that you give the talk with because you have um, connections that are made with the work and contrasts as well. So I was thinking when everyone was giving our presentation about um, the Bovril map and that's probably quite a good um, starting point for some of the work I'm going to show you. But also her um, sort of reflections on memory and subjectivity. And I was thinking that one of the kind of starting points for me is is definitely being a twin. I grew up with the idea of um, not false memory syndrome in any respect, but the idea of kind of the creative construction um, of memories being a really important um, part of my growing up. What I'm going to show you today is going to be quite different to what Emma's shown you. Basically, um, it's not often that I get asked to give a talk where I can just give it on anything. Usually they ask me to give uh, to give a talk perhaps on photography or on participation in my work. So what I'm going to do is give you a kind of whistle-stop uh, tour almost of my work and I'm mindful of time so if you can kind of tell me when 15 minutes is up um, I'm just going to show you quite a lot of my work and show you my most recent work as well. So, so I'm so used to Max. Um, a lot of the work that I make does revolve around photography or photographic practice but also um, engages with working with people in quite different ways. This was a project that I started with started in um, 2007. It was a commission by Platform um, for Art, which is now called Art on the Underground. And they were commissioning work to work with different kind of communities um, and approached me and said they wanted me to start a project and start the project with showing this series of work, Cocaine, which was actually commissioned by Autograph, um, who are just a couple of floors above here. The work came about from a residency I did in Mauritius um, where I started looking at the way in which the island, which is where my father's from, I'm half Chinese Mauritian and half Scottish, the way in which the island is kind of being incrementally um, commodified and changed according to the tourist gaze. Um, the island is starting to change in the traditional Kausarina trees, for example, which is just the very kind of thin trees that you get on the beaches, are being taken down and um, palm trees are being put up. Um, I was also interested in the way in which tourism is kind of using and implicating aspects of the colonial past. For example, there's the Sugar Beach Resort, which is a hotel where aspects of the, uh, the island's sort of colonial past are almost being played out. People dress up as the kind of masters and the servants, and you can stay in the colo colonial kind of uh, quarters as well, or the servants' quarters. I became interested in this 14th century idea of a glutton's paradise, cocaine, where um, all your kind of needs and wants are met. So what you've got here is a landscape that's constructed out of different food stuff um, that kind of literally joins up as a, almost a 360 degree landscape. They asked me to develop work um, from this, and I, I worked for about a year um, with probably about 60 different people, ranging from London underground staff to um, traders at Borough Market to catering students at Southwark College. And I became interested in um, Jules, Jules Verne's novel, A Journey to the Centre of the Earth. I thought about the fact that when we travel on the underground, it's such a kind of mundane, um, almost kind of monstrous way of travelling to us, but actually there's something incredible, something wonderful about the fact that we can journey underground. And in the novel, um, the two protagonists enter into the earth, um, they come across kind of 40 foot giant mushrooms, these, these kind of um, landscapes that are almost cooking themselves, it's almost like a journey <laughs> into the stomach or the bowels of the earth before the, the two characters are almost kind of spewed up at the end. So I constructed um, with catering students from Southwark College this uh, large landscape which is in one of the longest tunnels or was in one of the longest tunnels at London Bridge. So with a lot of the um, this is another part of the project. Um, this is um, the entrance to London Bridge. Again, this is a kind of entrance where I constructed a landscape out of foods that have a sort of entrance point. I was thinking about the way in which now we get packaged. Um, you can actually buy bottles of um, eggs that have been broken. And we can, you know, there's a kind of, I'm sure in America they've had that for years. But um, I thought there was something horrific about the fact that we've got these wonderfully kind of nature-made containers such as eggs or peanut shells that I've used here as well, but that we're actually breaking them, repackaging, anyway. So um, now going on to, this is a work that was um, 
the official Roman ruled memory tasting unit. For this work, I um, worked with and interviewed people who lived and worked down um, Roman Road, which is the site of the East End Market, and I asked them to tell me about significant um, foods from their memories. What I did was I set up a booth that one person could enter individually and they were given a menu, but instead of a menu of, um, instead of, a menu of food, it was a, a menu of memories. So people were allowed to select, for example, um, a memory that would be the dust in my grandmother's attic, something like that. And they were then given blindfold and headphones um, and they were able to taste this food stuff. I bought in or we cooked the food stuff according to people's recipes. Obviously I checked if people were kind of allergic to anything but what you got here, you see for example is a, a, a young man who for some of the young people that I was work that came onto the booth, um, they were actually tasting things for the very first time. Um, I did also get yeah, a huge range of people. Anyway, it was, it, was, it was really interesting, the conversations that came out of it as well. And what people could do is then leave their own memories. So it became this kind of ongoing conversation between people who didn't meet but just met through their senses. Um, this is another piece of work I did for a residency at Balwick Arts, which is um, a huge manor house in uh, Norfolk. And I became interested in the way in which planning permission um, alters the landscape around us or kind of limits or, or visually um, affects the landscape around us, almost a kind of corollary to the way in which um, the tourist gaze changes the landscape in Mauritius and other islands. And what I did was I contacted all the people who had planning permission pending on their properties within a specific area, which involved me travelling on a uh, miniature railway and the, the public transport network is, is, is non-existent in, in Norfolk. Um, and what I did, you can see in the, the top part, this is an installation in a, a shed of the largest size before a planning permission is needed for that structure. And it was on part of um, the, sited on part of the estate on an island um, that was changed before a planning permission um, sort of came into being or was necessary. What I did was I asked I ask the people that had planning permission pending on their properties to come up with their own designs for a paradise island of this island. So what you can see is kind of architectural drawings and then also photographs of the places in their houses that they wanted to change. What came out of this was um, the kind of need for not just space but almost sort of met metaphoric space or um, space not just in their own houses but kind of in their own heads so what you got at the the bottom of the architectural plans that I developed with them was for example temporary drawbridges or a coral reef around the island I then submitted these proposals into the planning department of the area and they sent me back letters which um, discussed aspects of their um, the kind of ideals of this paradise island. So what I was doing was almost putting people's kind of uh, fantastical ideas in competition um, with each other. But because I'd, I'd gone in and spoken to the planning department, they, uh, yeah, they were very kind of supportive and very engaging on it. So what they said, for example, was that the, um, a drawbridge would be fine as long as it came under the Temporary Structures Act 1.2 I think but as long as it was only down for two days a week that the coral reef would come on under the kind of trees act of uh, because it, it, that was okay as, lo as long as it was a particular size um, 